In this example, we want to determine the limit of the absolute value x divided by x as x approaching zero. Okay. Um, so to get an understanding of this function, let's uh, look at this. Uh, let's graph this function. Okay. So just recall uh, the definition of the absolute value of x. Okay. So the mathematical definition of the absolute value of x is that uh, basically it's just the number of units uh, from the origin, okay? So if the argument of x, right, so if the inside of the absolute value is positive or zero, then it's just going to be x itself. Okay, if it's negative, okay, then we take the negative of that value, okay? All right, so just as a simple example here, the absolute value of, let's say, 2, okay, this is, this is just going to be 2 since 2 is uh, strictly bigger than 0, so this is going to give us the value of 2. Uh, and if we take the absolute value of minus 2, then this is just going to be the minus of negative two. So we get two here. So that, in and, and both of these cases, that tells you how many units it is uh, from zero, okay? So we can use this information to uh, come up with the graph of this function, okay? All right, so for, okay, so let's break this down by case, okay? So when x is uh, strictly bigger than zero, okay, this function, okay, so our function that we're looking at, okay, so our function is this basically, okay, so if x is strictly bigger than zero, uh, then our function in this case is going to be x over x, which is going to give us one. Okay. If x is strictly less than zero, then our function, okay, is going to be, so on the top part, we're going to get the absolute value x, okay, so an x is less than zero, so that means we're going to have x on top. On the bottom, we're going to have a negative value, okay. Um, so we can just, we can just write like this, actually. So, okay, so again, this is for x being less than zero. Okay, so on the top part, we put a minus x, but keep in mind that x is negative. Okay, so that means we're going to get a negative, or I'm sorry, positive value on top and a negative value on the bottom. So this is going to give us minus 1. Okay, all right. So if you want to see an example of this, okay, uh, let's take the consider, or let's consider x equals to negative 5. Okay. Okay, so we plug in minus 5, we get the absolute value of minus 5 divided by minus 5. So this is going to give us positive 5 on top and negative 5 on the bottom, and so this gives us negative 1. So this is going to be true uh, regardless of whichever x value it is, uh, uh, for x being less than 0. Okay? And if x is equal to 0, then uh, this function is undefined uh, because we can't divide by 0 here. Okay. So this is enough to give us an idea of the graph, okay? So when x is strictly bigger than zero, uh, this is gonna give us, okay, this is gonna be open, so we're just gonna get the horizontal line of y equals one. And if x is strictly less than zero, then we're gonna get negative one, okay? All right, so this is another type of piecewise function, okay? Um, but clearly, we can see that the uh, left-hand and right-hand limits are not going to be equal, okay? So if we look at, right, so if we take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of this function, okay? So as x is approaching 0 from the right side, okay? So we're, right, so we're coming from this direction. Okay? So again, think about this. Uh, uh, you're driving. You're driving some vehicle along this path. 
okay and as as you're driving along okay as at, you're getting closer and closer to zero okay for x and you're approaching the y value of one okay because you're never you're never going to um, stray from that value okay so it's always on one and it's getting closer and closer to one in this case okay and we can say the same thing in the other case as x approaches zero from the left side okay um, in this case we're on the y value of minus one okay so as x it gets closer and closer to zero, zero from this direction uh, it's approaching minus one okay okay so clearly we can see that these two limits are not equal okay so the left hand and right hand limits they both they both exist however the overall limit does not exist okay so the limit as x approaches zero for our function okay does not exist all right because the left and right hand limit do not equal okay all right so again for the for the overall limit to exist the left and right hand limits must be equal they must approach the same value and clearly this in this example that does not happen